In this episode, we finally finish burying the outer ends of the house. We started by positioning some carefully chosen rocks up here to keep the earth where we wanted it. The Roe Brothers' excavation arm can only reach so far over the roof, so we just used shovels and pulled it down the rest of the way. At this point I had the great idea of putting the camera on the excavator. I apologize, but you can pause it to get some interesting perspectives. And then it was time to work on the boulder retaining wall. I hadn't really put enough thought into how these were going to be laid out. I just imagined them going up in like a stair step fashion over the umbrella. Then it was around to the south side to bury the umbrella on that side. After the excavator crew left for the day, I got back to working on my heavy block wall. You may recall that we paused work on it earlier because it was leaning back so far and I didn't want it to fall in before we had a chance to get the dirt behind it. No danger of it falling backward now, but it needs to get taller in a hurry. While I was doing this, I spent most of my time actually thinking about that boulder wall and how I would get those ones laid out optimally. The next day, the crew came back out and we started by undoing half of the previous day's work on that boulder wall. I needed to adjust the direction the wall was going, or it wouldn't have been tall enough with the number of boulders that I had. This time we put some of the boulders on their sides and tried to interlock them as well as we could. I love the way Dick Rowe uses that bucket like a big gorilla hand to steady the rocks. It's like an extension of his body. Then they continued by backfilling over the umbrella on the north side. Basically, the dozer's job is to bring the dirt to where the excavator can pick it up and place it efficiently. Here the dozer is cleaning up that field and transitioning it into the hill. Again, this clip is really that same time period we just saw over again, but from a different camera, so you can see the excavator burying that umbrella again. Dozer Marty put a lot of thought into that transition, especially on the garage side where I'd given him even trickier geometry to deal with. Back around on the south side and that dirt was just so fine and loose that it kept pouring off. So we kept adding more. I guess um, better to add it now while we've got that big excavator on hand. And then some final cleanup with the dozer. And there you go, the excavator crew are done one quarter of the way through the video and we've got a lot of manual follow up. We still had to finish up that block wall that blew out during the first burial phase. This time you can see we filled all the cores with concrete and made sure it went all the way to the bottom. We put in lots of horizontal reinforcement too. Meanwhile, Sherry and my mother in the background preparing the surface for grass seed. There you can see we're backfilling that first half of the wall while my excavator bucket can still reach over it. The Roe Brothers also let us borrow this heavy drag rake. It's got teeth like railroad spikes and you drag it around to help prep those larger areas for grass planting. Now the camera's up on the roof and you can see the raking is almost done. Sherry is planting grass seed and I'm back to working on the heavy stone wall. We got a light rain on and off all day. Not ideal for humans, but it's great for grass planting so we couldn't complain. 
looking at myself work on the top edge of that roof there, I, I now know better, and I'll have to strip the top edge of that wall off again to put metal flashing in there when I get a chance. Basically, water did manage to get in through the Blue Max and leaked in between the concrete and the ICFs. So, so I'll be tearing that all off, and I'll get to learn how strong that mortar is on the top of that wall. In the background every now and then you can see my blue truck zip by dragging that big rake. Here you can see Sherry is raking over all that grass seed and my mother is still prepping further down the hill. Here, Michael's just doing his homework. Uh, daily life still goes on. Imagine if we had to prep this whole field by hand. Thanks again to the Rowe brothers for that drag. Now the tiny little people at the top there are tossing out grass seed. We looked after the area closer to the top with grass seed and then we're just gonna let the rest fill in naturally. This was actually a cornfield for decades, so it's been stripped and replanted every year for a very long time. back at the wall with the other camera, and this is happening during the same time that Sherry was driving the drag through that field. We put these perpendicular dead man blocks in, hopefully it helps a little. Again, with that very helpful light rain. Then Sherry and I took to manually raking over the bedrooms together. And the sun set on that weekend. During the week I managed to get out there just as the sun was setting to work on that boulder wall. With the stones laying sideways like this, I couldn't just rely on their weight to keep them in place. I needed to add rebar pegs and mortar and just plain old big piece of rebar to help tie it all together. Here again a little earlier on another evening and I was packing stones and mortar between these big boulders. We started at the top of the wall and worked our way down. This guy is someone who had been following my progress online and he got a hold of me and he wanted to come out for a tour and to help for a few hours. Hopefully he enjoyed his day. Maybe it wasn't uh, the most exciting uh, job to be joining us on. On this day you can see that I'm basically putting a big long piece of rebar with continuous concrete behind these boulders. pounding it in with that post just to get it all condensed a little bit before I put the, the concrete in there. We ended up putting many bags of concrete and mortar in to tie these boulders together. You can't just leave them on a hill like this uh, without, without that sort of reinforcement behind them. All that water is to wash the fresh mortar off the fronts of the stones. This is why we work from the top down. Nearing the end here and Brody is drilling to put rebar pegs down through those big stones and into that concrete wall below. The video cut out and didn't show me putting the big rebar pegs into those top couple holes. 
I also drilled some additional holes to set my copper pipe safety fence. More details on that on the website. The next video will show work on the garage safety fence while the grass grows.